Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about second order homogeneous differential equations. We're going to look at what these look like, the characteristics of these equations, and also how we would go about solving them. So let's begin. So, second order homogeneous differential equations have the form of, that looks like this. So you'll see that the highest derivative in the equation is a second derivative. Unlike the first order differential equation, where the highest derivative was always the first derivative. So when this function on your right hand side is zero, which means that there is no f of x on this side, no function with respect to the independent variable, then it is called a homogeneous differential equation. Or in, in the book, with the book that we use, a free system differential equation, which means it's free from external forces. Where you have f of x not equal to zero, then it is a non-homogeneous or forced system differential equation. And we're going to start off with where it is homogeneous, because in math you always start off from simple and work to what is more complicated. So, this equation here, right, the general form that we're working with, can also be written with this notation here, where you have y double prime, meaning the second derivative, and y prime, meaning your first derivative. And you'd be familiar with this notation from your first year classes. Or you can change the form of that equation or the notation of that equation to look like this where this D is what we call the D operator. And the D operator means that it is the derivative. And when you have dy like this in the middle term, you can see it means that it is the differential operating on y. So the derivative of y. In the first term, it means that it is the second derivative of y. So focusing on the homogeneous differential equation, that means that your differential equation is equal to zero, that f of x is zero. This can also be written, because we have d operators now, we can write it in this form, where you bracket off the first three terms and you set the y on the outside. So really you're using the, the notation, the d operator notation, because of its convenience. You change the form of the equation that you're working with. And the equation, the expression that is in the brackets, can be written as your auxiliary equation. This is what we call the auxiliary equation. And this comes from, if you look at this bracket, it's that bracket multiplied by y. And the only way that this equation can be true is if either the bracket is zero or if y is the zero. Now, we know that y can't be zero because y is your dependent variable and it is the solution to the differential equation. And if y was zero, it means that your equation would be zero. There would be nothing. So that means that the auxiliary equation has to be set equal to zero. And you'll see here that your auxiliary equation is in fact a quadratic equation. So just imagine these d's were x's, you would be able to solve for values of those x's. Similarly, you'd be able to find values for this d. So you would either prime factorize or you would use your quadratic formula. And when you find the solution for these d's using the quadratic formula, you would have found the roots of the equation. Hopefully that sounds familiar. And these roots, when you are working with homogeneous differential equations here, can tell you what the solution of the original differential equation will look like. Now, there are, there are derivations for this. I'm not going to go through them. I'm simply going to state what those solutions are. So there are three cases for the roots of the auxiliary equation. You can have roots which are real and different which means that either d is m and d is n, so different values completely, plus 1, minus 1. Those are two different numbers, remember. Then your solution for your differential equation would look like this, right? You see here, 
that the root goes into the power of the E. And it doesn't matter whether M is attached to A or N is attached to B, it doesn't matter. Then you can have where roots are real and the same. So, for example, each of the roots is 2. 2 here, 2 there. Then the solution for the differential equation would look like this. Where your roots are complex, and you remember again, complex numbers comes from your first year, first year of mathematics. Where you have A being your real part and B being your imaginary part. And your solution would look like this, where the real part of the root goes into the power of E and the imaginary part goes into the angle of cos and B. And we always use the positive value, not the negative value. And you'll see here, in each of these solutions, we have this notation here, YCF. Y being your dependent variable. So remember also that if your dependent variable is, for example, T, big T, capital T for temperature, then that there would also be a big T. If it was S for displacement, that would also be S. You must remember that. And you see I've got here a subscript CF, and that means the complementary function. Okay, and we'll go into more depth later on. Because for the solution of our homogeneous or free system equation, your overall solution for the differential equation is the same thing as the complementary function. For a non-homogeneous or forced system equation, your solution is going to be made up of two parts, the complementary function and your particular integral. And this we're going to go over in the next section of work. I hope you found that interesting, at least a little bit. Thank you. Have a good evening.